Welcome to today's video. It's an episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays, how to fix knee pain. This is the messiest bike fit studio ever, mate. We need someone with a jig. We need someone who has the longest knees in the entire world. Should we magic her in? Yes. Yeah? So smooth. So part one of today's video, what are the most common causes of knee pain on the bike? Should we dispel the myth that you don't get knee pain because your saddle's too low? Everyone bangs on about the fact that if you have your saddle too low, you get knee pain. I have never seen someone come in here with knee pain because the saddle's too low. In fact, I had a guy in this morning who I, whose saddle height I raised by six centimeters and he wasn't getting knee pain. The single most common cause for knee pain is excessive saddle height, usually as a result of the rider listening to one side. So most people sit off to uh, their dominant side, which means that they sacrifice their non-dominant side, and that's usually the side they end up with knee pain. So 90% of the people that I, experience, I encounter who have knee pain, have knee pain in the left knee, and almost 100% of those 90% have the saddle too high. Other common causes are if you have too much pitch applied to your saddle, too much reach, crank length too long, and a certain brand of cycling shoes. But how can you diagnose the cause of the knee pain? Which part of your bike or your setup is gonna be the culprit? Socially distance, pointing stick. One meter now. This is a meter stick. I think it depends on the origin of the pain, where it is in the knee, and also whether if it, whether or not if it's on one knee or the other. If it's on if it's on one knee, it's usually as a result of an asymmetrical interaction with the bicycle. You're listening to one side, you're rotated. Could be leg length discrepancy as well, but that's relatively uncommon. Leg length discrepancy is a relatively common ailment, but it causing issues on a bicycle is relatively uncommon. If you put uh, knee pain into four different categories, and bear in mind this is a gross generalization, knee pain in cycling is usually multifaceted, but we're gonna split it into four different categories. Anterior, on the front of the knee, or general, generally around, uh, around the kneecap. A lateral to the outside of the knee, medial to the inside of the knee, or sometimes posterior on the back of the knee. If we start with anterior, because that's one of the more common ones, anterior pain is usually associated with something that's going on with the foot. Uh, cleat location is one of the major drivers for it. If the cleat location is too far forward, you end up putting quite a lot of stress through the foot, which then refers up through the knees. I know I said you can't get it as a result of insufficient saddle height. Occasionally, very occasionally, I might experience someone who has uh, anterior pain as a result of the saddle being too low, usually as a result of there being too much flex in the knee under load, and again, that's where the crank length thing comes in. If the crank's too long for the rider, then that can also give you anterior knee pain. So lateral pain, or pain on the outside of the knee, uh, very commonly in cycling misdiagnosed as iliotibial band syndrome, uh, is quite commonly associated with a valgus knee. Right, when your knee's coming together, or not need, that could be as a result of excessive stance, so your feet too far, far apart. Uh, it could just be a physiological trait. Um, but it usually, lateral pain usually occurs or in one knee, more often than not as a result of a rider listening to one side, so as they list to one side, the knee inevitably comes in. Uh, bike fitting 101 tells you to put a wedge in there when the reality is you just need to lower the saddle height. Uh, so yeah, that's, it's usually driven by a closing of the outside of, of the knee. Medial pain, pain on the, outside, uh, on the inside of the knee, sorry, usually occurs in both knees. It's particularly common in bigger riders where, where they, they see uh, displacement through the top of the stroke, so the knee comes out the top of the stroke. Um, again, you're loading the medial or the inside of the knee. Posterior pain is, is the least common of the four. Uh, again, it's usually associated with excessive saddle height uh, and overextension or hyperextension of the leg. Um, having said that, as the when the saddle's too low, it tends to over enlist the hamstrings somehow, and that again can often cause posterior pain in the knee. Well, that's all well and good, but how do you actually fix the pain? Here is a little checklist you can go through uh, in order of priority of how you can fix your knee pain if you have it. Like I said earlier, the, the, the single most common cause of knee pain is excessive saddle height. As a result of either the rider listening to one side and hyperextending the knee, or generally just hyperextending the knee and losing control through the bottom of the stroke. So I, my, instinctively my first solution is have a go at lowering your saddle height. Do it 10 mil, maybe 15 mil and see how it feels. So saddle height is basically a balancing act between not impinging the hips with the top of the stroke, but also getting uh, enough extension through the leg to maximize 
uh, recruitment of the extensors, glutes, quads. This is Daisy's saddle height. Bear in mind, there's always flexibility in saddle height. Um, if you're having to point the toes through the bottom of the stroke, that's usually a good indication that the saddle's too high. You're looking for fluidity rather than terminal extension of the leg. The amount the leg extends has got nothing to do with it. You're looking for smoothness. The next thing I'd do would be take cleats further back. So the saddle height and the cleat thing should be done in combination almost because if you take the cleat further back you, ex you increase the extension of your leg. But the point of taking the cleat further back is that it improves stability of the foot. Uh, basically the more unstable your feet are the further back you're going to need it to a certain extent. Uh, but a very very common driver is, is the cleat being too far forward. I'm going to do a shameless plug for my own channel. We've actually done a video on cleat position before, so I'm going to put a link down below uh, if you want to look at cleat position and the benefits of having your cleat further back is in there. I think we've really missed um, the most important and crucial uh, way of getting rid of knee pain. Get a bike fit! Right, I've tried both of those. They, they didn't work. I've still got knee pain. Well, okay, again, so we, we haven't talked about um, the potential uh, ways of curing the lateral knee pain and the medial knee pain. So if, your knee, if, you, if you're getting medial knee pain, really very common. One way to solve it might be to increase the stance. You can do that at the cleat. You can push the cleat inboard to get the foot as far away from the bike as possible. You can do it with washers. You can also, Shimano actually makes a long axle pedal, uh, four millimeters, actually so does speed play to be honest with you. You know, if you're getting pain on the inside of your knees, moving the cleat further out, sorry, moving the feet further out may well improve things for you. If you've got pain on the outside of the knee, uh, it could be the other way around. You might need to get the feet foot close together, particularly common with smaller riders. I have to admit, I don't really see that very often. I don't see many people with lateral pain in both legs. I think we were talking off camera a minute ago about the general shoe setup as well, potentially being the cause. It doesn't, it might not necessarily just be that the cleats are too far forward. It could be the shoes are too big. Very, very common blunder for shop, uh, shops and consumers alike is to size up to accommodate the width of the foot. Therefore, the cleat location ends up too far forward. Uh, if the shoe is old and it's falling apart or it doesn't offer sufficient support to the foot, that again can cause knee pain. Equally, if you've got no arch support in, in place, that again can cause knee pain. I find it amusing that in, um, I think I've said this before actually, in, in the world of skiing, if you ski with any level of regularity, you are considered a moron if you don't have arch support in your ski boots. Yet we have legions of cyclists riding with no arch support in their cycling shoes. Or... I guess in conclusion, the, the main thing to, to remember with this is that pain in cycling, not just in knees, but across the, across the board, is generally multifaceted. So these things might not solve your problems. There's no substitute for getting a professional to look at your position. Uh, that being said, Try them in order. If you have any problems, or if you continue having problems, you know, put some comments in the uh, put some comments below, and we'll see if we can answer them. As usual, I'll put a link down below to the shop that we are in now. If you wanted to book a real life fit with James, like he said, put a comment down below if you have any questions. Please like and please subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.